What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday on Ambiguity. It is Saren here. Today we are joined with a special guest, Andrew, who identifies as polyamorous, as the discussion today will be polyamory and monogamy. He's just going to be um, uh, addressing some myths that people have of polyamory and people who identify as poly and their relationships and all of that. Um, so, Andrew, would you care to introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew. I'm a 21-year-old trans guy, and I'm here this week on Ambiguity with Saren to talk about uh, polyamory. So, what's up, Saren? I'm glad you contacted me for this. I'm really excited to share like whatever insight I can offer. All right. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for sharing that. And we are extremely, extremely excited to hear your insight. The first question I have for you is, how would you define polyamory? The easiest way to define polyamory is to say that it's not monogamy. So um, that's really the only way you can describe it, though, because there exists so many different realms of possibilities for polyamorous relationships. And most people look at polyamorous relationships as open relationships or as relationships that aren't very serious or um, as just not as what they are. And so from what, you, what you've said, it seems like there are so many different ways of identifying as poly and going about your relationships. So what, is it, what does it mean to be um, poly to you and how do you go about your relationships and, and what does that look like? What that means is that I am engaged to my fiance Han and uh, they're an incredible partner and I love them to death, but we still have... Um, partners outside of our relationship and some people will say like hey why are you getting married if you're just gonna date other people well like one of the most important parts of being polyamorous is not allowing your other relationships to affect your other relationships like one relationship doesn't have any bearing on another relationship except that you know both those people know that they exist and that those things are happening and they might interact and it might be a thing you know so my 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 engagement to Han has no bearing on outside relationships. Like, it doesn't affect if I date someone else and me dating somebody else doesn't affect my marriage. You know, it's all, it's all connected, but it's also completely independent and standing on its own. From my experiences of, of talking to people, I've gotten the feeling that people have this perception that being polyamorous is easy and, like, you get to, you know, just mess around with whoever and nobody cares. Um, and so I'm curious as to what you think about that. Um, in terms of, like, polyamorous being easier than um, monogamous relationships? Just because, like, I feel this complete joy for my partner to be with somebody else and to be happy with somebody else and to be experiencing somebody else and have all those romantic things doesn't mean that it's, like, completely easy. Like, there is a lot of struggle in polyamory because we are raised in a monogamous society and our society dictates that we need to be in monogamous relationships or else those relationships aren't as valuable and we live in a very patriarchal society, so... AFAB people are like have to grow up feeling a sense of shame for having multiple partners and uh, just all sorts of stuff like our society is completely dominated by monogamy like to the point where people assume immediately when you say you're polyamorous that you're just sleeping around with a bunch of other people which totally could be a relationship, but that's not every single relationship style. So it's clear that there are a lot of misconceptions that people have of people who are poly and their relationships. So what are some questions that you're frequently asked and they may be invasive or not? Just what are you, what are you asked a lot about your relationships? Um, people always ask about uh, jealousy and how one partner can deal with another partner flirting with other people openly or um, just that kind of stuff. And there's, um, there's this word, it's compersion, and it's basically the opposite of jealousy, but it's where you find complete joy, like you find, like, okay, my fiancé has a boyfriend, and their boyfriend's name is Sav, and Sav is so cute and hunky and wonderful, and whenever I see them interacting, I see how happy they are, it just fills me completely with joy. Like, it makes me feel so good for them that they have each other and that they can love each other. And um, that's kind of what it is, like, a lot of my relationship with Han, um, our polyamorous relationship, is us growing with other people outside of each other. And um, I think that's what makes it such a valuable part of our relationship is that we allow each other that room to have other experiences and to um, and to just to, just to like live life in a way that is more wholesome and authentic to ourselves. A lot of times with people who are polyamorous, like, we've struggled with our polyamory for years and felt, like, kind of a sense of shame. Um, I knew growing up, whenever I was in relationships, and it was really easy for me to bounce out of those relationships and into a relationship with somebody else, um, I always felt very guilty 
because I was still sad over that person, but I couldn't change the feelings that I had for um, the person I was with. So it always made me feel very uncomfortable and like I wasn't doing relationships right. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Andrew. It was a pleasure to have you and we hope to have you back sometime soon. And I think it's great to just have somebody who identifies as poly speaking to this subject. So again, thank you very much. Um, it was an honor to have you. I hope I, I hope I touched on every single point. This is my first time ever really speaking about this uh, so openly. So it was a really good experience for me to be able to talk about it. And I hope I reached um, a couple of people with this. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Saren, for allowing me to do this. Uh, thank you for Ambiguity for allowing me onto your channel. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you taking the time to hear about my relationship styles. Yeah. See you guys. Thank you to everybody else for watching this. This was my first time ever doing a collaboration video. Um, I know I didn't do a lot of speaking. I just really wanted to hear Andrew's input and hear uh, what he had to say about being poly because, like I said um, earlier, it's just, you know, another identity that is very often misunderstood. And in, in addition to being trans, you know, it's a, it's a lot to... Um, it's a lot to take on, and especially in, in the public sphere when people are always constantly um, wanting to ask questions. So again, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for watching this, and I hope you all have a wonderful week to come. My surgery is, my top surgery is in three days, so I'm pretty stoked. I'm getting super nervous and just kind of trying to talk to people about their experiences. Anyways, I tried to, I tried to look so good for this video, but I just, look at me, I look like I look like a mess. I have to do all my homework. I have to clean my room because I'm going home soon for the surgery. What if I die? What if I don't make it? Oh my God, shut up. Okay. Thank you all. This was a great, great time. Andrew's phenomenal. He's fucking awesome. I'll put his links below. He, I'm sure you've already seen him or like you'll recognize his face. He's very well known, um, especially on social media and the Tumblr community because he is an inspiration. So... Thank you all for watching. I'll put everything below. I probably forgot to mention some stuff. I'll put everything below because that's just how it works with Saren. It's just, okay. Take care. I love y'all.